Hi, welcome to Saline Royal Academy. My name is Nathan Braude, and now we have for you Otto Hatabata, who will play for us the Bach Cello Suite Number no. Three, but on viola. We'll start with the first movement, the Prelude. Beautiful playing, beautiful playing. So, with Bach, of course, we have always more questions than answers. And I think there are a million possibilities of playing the Bach suites and everybody has a little bit their, their own strong opinion mm -hmm. on how they should be played. But I think I would like to explore with you, you know, to find, to find something that is convincing for you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there is always gonna be very, various opinions and i think at the end the most we speak a lot about authentic performances but i think at the end you have to be authentic you know with your your feelings to this mm -hmm. music yeah mm -hmm. so we have to find a very individual approach of course taking into consideration the millions of you know details we know about performance practice from that time yeah so first of all this prelude the third one of the third back suite is a kind of, you know, I always see the back suites as, you know, divided in two. We have the first three suites and then four, five, six. Mm. So for me, this suite number three is a kind of an ending of a first group of three. Mm -hmm. And also this 
this key is very, very special. And we have this, this big scale of C going up, mm -hmm. down, and by some, you know, they could describe it as the descent of Christ to earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, of course, never know for sure, but with Bach's music, there is not many coincidences. I mean, if, if you know, the choices that he made had deep meaning to it. Mm -hmm. So if we would take that as a starting point, kind of seeing the, as he was also a very religious person, uh, the send of Christ, how can we translate this into what we do, into, mm -hmm. into playing? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of idea can it give us about the sound, mm -hmm. about the tempo? Mm -hmm. In the tempo in which you played it, uh, Christ was quite an athlete. And he descended very, very quickly. For me also, as it is kind of the conclusion of the first three suites, it has something incredible, yeah, no noble to it. Mm -hmm. And I think something that is too rushed is, for me, doesn't make much, much sense. Yeah. So could we find something how you could, you know, express yourself, see, you know, this first descending of Christ mm -hmm. to our earth and see if we can find something that can transmit this image. Yeah. You know, what if we could see um, each interval mm -hmm. as a step, a, a, a real kind of ladder or step, and really feel it each step. Yeah. So I, I would definitely, first of all, not rush the first, the first C, you know, it's, it's the first note in, in, in the suite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we all know, the prelude, one of the functions is, of course, to put the key in which the suite will be in the listener's mind. Yeah. So we have to, the C must be immediately subtly or not so subtly put in the mind of the listener. Mm -hmm. And for that, we need time. I think if we, yeah, da, da, de, it's, it's not enough time to actually acknowledge, oh, mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe a bit, a bit longer and try to really enjoy the view on each step as you go. Yeah, de, da, de, da, de, da, de, da, 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 de. And arrive at this, you know, and he has arrived. Very good, very good. I think the only little detail that I would add, the ending for me, it, it's still yeah, da 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 team. You know, when the the savior or Christ, you know, or, or arrives on earth, you know, he he wants to make quite quite an entry, you know. It's mm -hmm. a yeah, da 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 tea. And now he will speak to us. Mm -hmm. It's your introduction of you coming here, and now I will speak to you. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Then, before we go on, now that we find this kind of visual, the image that maybe you want, maybe you don't want, I don't know, it's just an, an idea I'm suggesting, uh, a visual that we want to transmit, I want to talk a little bit about something more dry and more technical. And that is the stroke that we will be using. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can put it under the umbrella of style, um, that, you know, each style had different interpretations, also different instruments and different bows. Yeah, we didn't have, uh, in the time of Bach, the perfect bows that we have today. Um, they didn't even have bow makers. Mm -hmm. It was just a guy in the violin shop making some very imperfect bows mm -hmm. that had the most strange shapes. And actually the note and the bow, the way the bow was shaped, had a very clear beginning, middle, and at the end of it was almost no sound. At the mm -hmm. tip, there was, you could barely make a sound of it. Um, and therefore, I think the stroke that I would like to, to look for now is maybe not a stroke that is so on the string, but to find a kind of semicircle stroke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we have the clear, to put it in a more poetic way, yeah, Burst, 
life, death. Mm. And now it sounds a little bit all, all like that. So if we could just, you know, find any note that you wish, let's take the C. The... Find a stroke that, that has a, is not a sustained one, is not a tenuto one, but that has a clear beginning, lives and dies. And just play it a few times, repeat it just to find, to find the stroke which we will use throughout the piece. Yeah. And maybe for now, let's, let's do it without vibrato. I love your vibrato, but just the vibrato is musk, uh, how you say it, is, yeah. is taking away the attention of the, the sound we're creating with the bow. So once just without. Yeah. And now can we take into consideration, we have a luxury situation of having these amazing bows. Uh, back then the bow was also, you know, here you didn't have already any sound. So you had actually less space to make sound. You didn't have the possibility to do that. You would have... Yeah. And don't be afraid to go really in the string and then release. Yeah. Can we just play that that scale with the cessation? Yeah. Very good. And if you feel, you know, because the now we're, we're so taught that, you know, we have to make each note sound good and we have to work so hard. And I still feel that at the end of the note, you're afraid to release it completely. You Be a bit lazier. If it wants to die at the end, let it. Now let's add the vibrato and and the other rule that we will always apply um, that as soon as we will have intervals, we we should not try and mask them or hide them. Yeah. If there is a little jump, it's totally fine. So because we have a scale. It's totally fine. It's really also a notion from much later that everything should be more equal. But not, not here. So if, if you feel that you're born... ...wants to have a little bouncement, that's totally fine for me. Very, very good. And the last thing now, be a theater actor. You have to make the entire audience see that image that you see. So much more be from the beginning. And now I will speak to you. Very good, very good. Um, so now you've created a beautiful image in the beginning mm. with a very, again, I'm, I don't like to talk dynamics and there are of course no dynamics, but I would definitely go for something that has a bigger presence. Mm. But then you've created very high expectation. Mm. I mean, come on, Christ coming to, to earth is not a small news. It's mm. a, quite a big news. And then finally he is about to speak and there is no sound coming. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so... so um, maybe not too much to drop. We still, you know, you create very high expectation. Now we want to hear what you will say, what you have to tell us. Mm -hmm. Please don't rush. Very 
very, very, very good. Um, I find in general your stroke, you're playing it absolutely beautiful, but I find it still a little bit, if we talk about stylistic. Um, beautiful kind of legato playing. And I wonder if we can find again this stroke that is a bit more spoken. So. So then, it sounds beautiful how you how you play, but I wonder if we can try and find something new, and then it's up to you if you wanna mm -hmm. take it or leave it. Yeah, and I, I think also the meaning of you know down and up bow where we spend hours and hours of trying you know to make the up bow sound equal to the down bow. We spend hours on trying the tip sound as as good as the as the frog. And now we have the chance to be bad students to have the. Of course, the down is always the heavy. I think that the, we're so control freaks. We want to control everything, and and here I think we have to let a little bit the bow do do the work. Very good. And the other thing we we spoke about already many times is the the idea of action reaction. Yeah. yeah? We, we don't need to make action on every note. We can have the... Instead... Beautiful. Yeah, let, let, let's go from there again. Yeah. Um, it, it feels like you're in a rush. It's quite a jump. And feel this interval. Don't shy away of intervals. Mm -hmm. The, the problem is because um, you're trying now to show the the intervals. You're making each one. Let again. Let see what the bow will do without if you don't do anything. It will probably be a bit messy and very unequal. But maybe it's it's not a bad thing sometimes to be a bit unequal. And... Then just try a few times. On free open the end.